the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, the Bible says, which is able to, number one, build you up. It is only the word of God that is able to build men. Number two, to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. The Bible says, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture, which is able to make you wise even unto salvation. Hallelujah. When we invest time learning the word, we are learning the modus operandi of the kingdom. We are allowing the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you. Permit this mind, this thinking, this ideology to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The word of God gives us enlightenment spiritual illumination access to light and john 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not he said that was the true light that lighted every man hallelujah he came to bear witness to the light john 1 verse 6 there was a man the bible says sent from god whose name was John. Next verse says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through his witness might believe. Verse 8, it says he was not that light. He was only sent to bear witness of that light. 9 says, that was the true light. Jesus, by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the light that lighted every man, his ministry is for every man, not just church people, every man. Are we blessed? Now, let me just give a little theological background. Theologically speaking, there are certain words. You've heard me say it again, that there are certain words that even though used in the Christian faith, are not found verbatim in scripture there are a number of them we use them as a lingua franca among believers but then these are not words that are captured in scripture one of it is the word rapture you will not find any word rapture in scripture are we together but then we know that there is an event that we call rapture praise the name of the lord another word is trinity you never find oh by the way let's bless azaria family they are following right now let's give them a big 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 god bless you <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord so the word trinity because before i begin to talk about the holy spirit i need to clear the air over an issue that has remained for very long in the body of christ the confusion as to the triune nature of God is being a confusion among believers, among Bible scholars. There have been different schools of thought as to the triune nature of God. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And so many people have used that scripture to negate the existence of divinity in a tripartite form. Are we together it seems as though there are three gods the father the son and the holy spirit which one do we worship which one do we serve and it's brought a lot of confusion 
so when we teach about the ministry of the holy spirit there is further confusion again if this is not clear and the reason is because the holy spirit happens to be largely invisible and there has been no direct revelation of his form in terms of his human form are we together but then let me just take two or three minutes to let you know that the concept of the triune nature of god is a fact the bible does tell us that even though god is the god of the universe his operation is tripartite the father the son and the holy spirit this is a foundational understanding to the christian faith if you do not believe this something might be wrong with your conviction are we together now that it is true that the father the son and the holy spirit we call it the godhead the word one god does not mean a singular it means unity hear ye o israel the lord our god is one lord united is that true genesis chapter one let's go to the book of the beginnings now theologically speaking every time you want to examine a body of spiritual truth a subject um you begin your study from there's what we call the law of first mention so you go to scripture and then the context with which that word was mentioned first is the context that guides you as you study that subject are we together so we go to the book of beginnings genesis chapter one in the beginning the bible says god god created the heaven and the earth verse two it says and the earth was without form and void now you would notice um let me not assume genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 it seems like a contrast because according to the character of god's creation everything he creates is good is that true now we see that god created the heavens and the earth verse 1 and then verse 2 now says the earth was without form again so what was god creating the earth was without form void darkness was upon the face of the deep the hebrew expression tohu wa bohu confusion and chaos and then the bible says please go to verse 2 just keep it there verse 2 it says and the spirit of god so we see that the first the first dimension of the godhead revealed in scripture was the holy spirit and he was called the spirit of god he moved upon the face of the waters just for knowledge genesis 1 verse 2 came as a result of the judgment of lucifer right genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 did not just happen within a short time span now you know that the bible is a piece of literature and it was written uh, with with honor to all the principles of literature meaning that it was written largely in summary are we together now you would think that it just happened again and again there were prophets in the bible that never met themselves they were hundreds of years apart but when you read them because you are reading a summary it looked like one just died and next week the other one started no hallelujah so lucifer was judged in genesis 1 verse 1 god created the heavens and the earth and then the gap between Genesis 1 verse 1, 1 verse 2 in theology is called the gap theory. It's an attempt to explain what happened. The hundreds of years apart that would have led to this chaos and confusion. Because Genesis 1 verse 2 is not an expression of the character of God outside of the influence of another deity. The earth being dark and formless was as a result of the judgment so what you call creation story in genesis chapter one is actually a re-creation story that was not the original creation are we together job in the height of his frustration when you read chapter 38 
I'm just giving us an introduction, just a background. In chapter 38, Job was so frustrated because of his predicaments. The Bible says he summoned God and God came to him in a whirlwind and said, Who is this that dark not counsel without knowledge? He says, Guard your loins as a man and I would demand of you. Answer me. Question one. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? So there was a day the foundations of the earth was laid. We don't see that in the Genesis account. Are we together now? It says, declare if thou hast understanding. Verse 2. It says, who had laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest. In fact, let me tell you this for your knowledge. I hope you realize that what we call the Garden of Eden, the Garden of the Lord, that we call Eden, where Adam and Eve, the east side of the Eden, was where they were kept. The first occupant, according to the revelation that scripture brings, in the Garden of Eden, was Lucifer himself. Thou was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. You now see the vendetta between Lucifer and man. Because Lucifer was an expression of God to the then creation. The word eternity means the formation of infinite dispensations. We are not the first of the human race. No, we are just a little above 6,000 years. Science shows us the existence of a lot of humanoid species before us. There's nothing, um, there's nothing false about it. Adam, <laughs> understand what I'm saying now. I'm teaching koinonia. And then those who are interested in learning through this platform. I know why I'm saying what I just said now. Adam is not the first man. No. Adam was the first man created in the image. There was a dispensation where Lucifer was head over them. He was a representation. What Adam, what God brought man to do. There was a dispensation that Lucifer was mandated to be the revelation of God to them. And on account of that assignment, he's making angels, cherubs, were not made from dust. They were made from quantized light. Light, the depreciation of their body but the degree to which the light upon them excels. That is the degree to which they have visited the throne room. Because every time they meet him, it's a law to both human and angels that as we behold him, we are changed. Are we together now? Yes. So, Lucifer, it was on the strength of his build-up, the dexterity of his making, that pride came upon him are we together yes there's no time to begin to talk about lucifer lucifer was that cherub the bible says that cover it he was in eden the garden of the lord the entire object of his making was he was he was an artistry of god and his assignment was the custodian the light bearer revelations are stored as light and that was his office the son of the morning. On account of the revelations of God that he had, he built pride and said, do you know what? If this is all that makes God God, then I have the secrets to be God. I will exalt myself above the stars of God, he said. I will be like the most high. Treason was found in him. He wanted to run a parallel government so you can choose either God or him. And there was war in heaven now don't downplay the level of lucifer's intelligence even in heaven he deceived one third of the angels wow what would he have told them that made one third of the angels to literally leave their original estate the bible says and there was judgment in heaven michael the archangel you see that they met again over the body of moses you again they met Michael said, don't waste my time. The Lord rebuke you. So now, it was the judgment that came as a result of the fall of Lucifer. When you read the book of Revelations, it says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. For Lucifer, that great dragon, has been cast into the earth. He has come with anger and fury. That's why uncontrolled anger is the most classic proof that there is a spirit manipulating you. Yes, sir. Lucifer came down to the earth with anger and he was hovering around the face 
of the waters. It was the judgment of Lucifer that led to Genesis 1 verse 2. Do you understand now? So Genesis 1 verse 3 is God now bringing light. What light? This was not sunlight, I hope you know. Sunlight was created in day 4. This was the light, that the life-giving factor of creation. He withdrew it in the judgment of Lucifer. And so now, God said, light be. That's the original Hebrew rendition. Light be, and there was light. And then he began to create everything, and he saw that it was good, and so on and so forth. And then when we get to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, this is the first classic expression that proves the triune nature of God. And God said, let us. Let us. So this was, this was a parliament. There was a meeting going on. Not let me. Let us. But this does not automatically tell you whether there are three. There could be ten. Let us. So how do we know that it is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Are we learning? Next scripture very quickly. Matthew chapter 3, please, from verse 14. This is the baptism of Jesus. Now, look up, please. A little background again about Jesus. I hope you know that Jesus came to the earth for many reasons. Principally, to be a mediator, to bring many sons into glory. Are we together? He came and as, ex and as an expression of the love of the Father. This was revealed through his substitutionary sacrifice. To the end that whosoever believes in him, that report might receive the life of God in the flesh to show us that it was possible to live a victorious life. The third reason why he came was to become a marking script, a correction over our perceptions about God. Because until Jesus came, there were many things about God that people did not know. They did not have the rich um, opportunity to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the degree to which we enjoy. He would come upon them and then go away. He did not have a permanent residence within them. So they credited all kinds of things to God. Jesus came as God's manual, God's reference point, so that everything you thought God did or was, you looked at the life of Jesus to correct your orientation. Are we together now? Matthew chapter 3, please. Thank you, Jesus. Is someone learning? But John forbade him saying, this was Jesus at the baptism now, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Next verse. Now watch this. And Jesus, the logos of God, John 1, 1, remember? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The same was with God. So we see two there, the word and God. The same was with God, even though he was God also. Now, the Bible says, and Jesus. So we see that Jesus was there. When he was baptized, he went straight out of the water and lo, the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of God. Are you seeing now? So this is Jesus walking on earth in the flesh. The heavens open and the Holy Spirit descending upon him. Lightning upon him like a dove. 17. And then a voice, which is not the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus on earth. This is the Holy Spirit coming. And another third voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. Whoever calls him father, what should be his name? Whoever calls Jesus son must be. Jesus proved that he was father when he called Jesus. I mean, uh, God proved that he was father when he called Jesus So Jesus, the Word, the Spirit of the living God, the Father. One last proof. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. Matthew 28, the Great Commission from verse 18. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Next verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of... This is Jesus talking now. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. He didn't mention any fourth person. So we know from the mouth of Jesus 
that the Godhead is Trinity. Jesus himself spoke. Are you ready for one last proof? Acts chapter 7. This was the Matthias Stephen about to be stoned. Acts chapter 7 from verse 54 please. Acts chapter 7. Don't be tired of learning scripture. It gives you accuracy of understanding and then you are able to walk in the reality of the power and the grace of God on the strength of the spiritual illumination you have. It says when they had heard these things they were caught to the heart and gnashed when they heard these things they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth verse 55 now the bible says but he stephen now being full of the holy ghost so who was in stephen the holy spirit he looked steadfastly into heaven what did he see the glory of god and then jesus standing at the right hand so we see the holy spirit in stephen god manifesting in his glory the father and the son standing at his right hand why am i saying this thing so that you will believe from scripture not from opinion not from charismatism from scripture if your confidence is just based on what someone said it would dwindle with time but when your faith is anchored on scripture it becomes unbending you become immovable are we together now now the word spirit comes from the latin word spiritus it means breath spiritus s p i s numa all mean the same thing these are expressions of spirit are we together so a spirit typically speaking um generally it just means the life-giving factor of anything the life-giving factor of anything is the spirit of that thing are we together Gener who is the holy spirit number one the holy spirit is god acts chapter 5 from verse 3 to 4 please the Holy Spirit is God. This was the story of Ananias and Sapphira. We're proving that the Holy Spirit is not just an archangel. There are many well-meaning, sincere people who have carried teachings all around. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not a man. The Holy Spirit is God in every way. He's not junior to God. He's not one of the errant people in heaven. He is God in every way. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Are you saying that now? And to keep back part of the price of the land. Verse 4. Whilst it remained, was it not thine? After it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied to men, but to God. Peter now says... You have lied to the Holy Ghost and then you have lied to God. The Holy Ghost is God in every way. Number two, very quickly, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of God. He is not just the manifestation. He is the revealer of the presence and the power of God. The Holy Spirit. Benny Hinn calls him the unlimited presence of Jesus. How true based on scripture. He gives omnipotence to the presence. of. He could only be in one location at a time. But now the Holy Spirit has come to multiply the influence of Jesus across the earth. He is the continuation of the ministry of Jesus. But now not just localized to one man. He can be everywhere at the same time. So the Holy Spirit is a revealer. He is also the manifestation of the presence of God. Are we learning? This is very, very important. number three very quickly who is the holy spirit the bible calls the holy spirit the wisdom of god this is very powerful wisdom 
the wisdom of God. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, he says, the spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is called the spirit of wisdom. That means he is the life-giving force behind every manifestation of divine wisdom. There are three levels of wisdom as the Bible teaches. There is wisdom that comes from above, that is first pure. There is wisdom that is scientific, Sophia, that comes with experimentation and experience. There is wisdom that is diabolical and demonic. The wisdom we are talking about is wisdom that comes from above. Are we together? The spirit of wisdom. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. Paul is praying now. Ephesians 1 and verse 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom so the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of wisdom next point who is the Holy Spirit this is a very very important point I'm about to bring about the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture the Holy Spirit is the authentic author of Scripture. Not just Paul, not just David the Psalmist, not just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture. Second Peter chapter 1, please, and verse 21. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 21. 2 Peter 1 21 Hallelujah You can't find it go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 2 Timothy 3 from verse 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make thee wise unto salvation listen carefully through faith which is in jesus christ next verse it says all scripture how many all scripture old testament the gospel acts of the apostles the epistles revelation all scripture is given by inspiration of god by inspiration of god is profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction in righteousness verse 16 it says 17 now that the man of god may be mature and furnished unto all good works i don't know why they didn't find second peter is a mistake from me it says holy men wrote as they were inspired of the spirit so holy men only did the writing the author was god how many of you have seen people who translate the messages of others into books the translators cannot say the book is their own is that true the original person thank you second peter 1 21 for prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man but holy men spake as they were moved by the holy ghost if you help me transcribe my thoughts into a book you will be rewarded for your intelligence but the creativity and the intellectual property remains my own is that true so who really is the author of scripture no it can't be peter it can't be john they were moved by the holy spirit why is this important because if you ignore the holy spirit in an attempt to learn scripture you will end up in error listen carefully the source of error the real source of error is to just be scientific about the bible and ignore the person of the holy spirit in as much as the bible is truly an archaeological book a historical book a piece of literature but it is empowered with mysteries that only the author can unravel if the holy spirit does not assist you in opening scripture then you find out that you'll be reading history you'll be reading archaeology you'll be reading literature poetry and not have the requisite level of edification that comes with this this book is both closed and sealed. You can open it, but only the Holy Spirit can unlock the seals. Are we together? The Holy Spirit 
is the author of scripture that means the next time you open your bible to study the publishers of this book were not the authors of the book they only made it available to us holy spirit you are the author of scripture open my eyes and you will be surprised at the things that you will see it says open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law is god blessing us the holy spirit is the author of scripture now the holy spirit was revealed in the old testament like we know he came upon great men and women to do exploits but the character of his manifestation listen carefully you would notice that there was hardly a description of deep intimacy and fellowship with the holy spirit in fact the person who came closest as far as relationship with the holy spirit is concerned was david the man david cast me not away from your presence he said take not your spirit from me are we together but generally speaking the holy spirit would come upon men in the old testament prophets priests kings and then he would perform something supernatural through them and return back so they knew his power but they did not have the opportunity to know and learn the holy spirit in a very intimate way they experienced the power of the holy spirit but they did not have the privilege of what we call today koinonia the fellowship of the spirit hallelujah are we still together christianity becomes a religion if and when the ministry of the holy spirit is ignored it is the presence and the ministry of the holy spirit in this faith work that gives excitement to this adventure he is responsible for the exploits that men and women command in this kingdom write this down please it was the holy spirit who birthed the church romans chapter 8 and verse 15 you also find that in acts chapter 2 from verse 1 the holy spirit was the one who birthed the church the bible says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby as a family we can now cry abba father he brought us into this family acts chapter 2 and verse 1 when you read the bible says when the day of pentecost was fully come they were gathered together in one accord suddenly verse 2 there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty a rushing mighty wind it filled the house where they were sitting there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and it came and sat on each of them uh-huh verse 4 the bible says and they were filled with the holy ghost so the holy ghost birthed the church and if the church ignores him today then we'll become something else aside the church are we together we must bring back to our consciousness the person and the ministry of the holy spirit beyond religion beyond the fivefold let me tell you this the holy spirit is not a privilege of men and women of god in the gospel no the holy spirit is for everyone he's not just for pastors apostles prophet lever an unbeliever and creation generally speaking it's more than just the salvation experience as you'll be learning shortly are we together praise the name of the lord because for many people the moment you begin to talk of the ministry of the holy spirit here's what they tell you i'm not called into ministry just leave me i'm a businessman i will keep giving you money while you keep knowing him and go and do your crusade there show us the ancient path will you lead us along we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to end now listen the holy spirit is not only god i want you to know that the holy spirit is a person he has the attributes of personhood this is very powerful 
the holy spirit i've told you here that he's not just wind he manifests as all those elements but he's not them the holy spirit has the attributes of person of personhood he has a personality what makes someone a personality the presence of a will the presence of emotions the presence of an intellect there's no time to begin to deal with this but let's I, I've, I've done the, this teaching um, describing the personhood of the Holy Spirit but for the sake of what we're dealing with tonight let's just look at it one scripture each wheel number one Acts chapter 16 from verse 6 to 7 please very quickly help us we're proving that the Holy Spirit is a person the Bible says when they had gone throughout all the region of Galatia they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost he has a will the Holy Spirit forbade them verse 7 it says and after they were come to all of those names they went to those places, but the Holy Spirit suffered them not he restrained them the Holy Spirit has an independent will it's very important first Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 first Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 11 but all these walk at that one and the same self spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills the holy spirit has a will the holy spirit has emotions ephesians 4 and verse 30 ephesians 4 and verse 30 the holy spirit has emotions the bible says grieve not the holy spirit if he was not sensitive to that action the bible would not ask you to not grieve him he says grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption the holy spirit has intellect intelligence romans 8 27 romans 8 27 the bible says he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit why because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God he knows what is the mind of the spirit first Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 write it down please first Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 we're looking at 10 and 11 the Bible says but God had revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches there is intelligence with the spirit the Holy Spirit is not a robot there is intelligence to him he searches all things yea the deep things of God for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God the Bible reveals to us very quickly the purpose of the Holy Spirit we need to know why the Holy Spirit was sent why do we talk so much about him why did Jesus talk so much about him The Holy Spirit has basically a threefold, a threefold ministry. A threefold ministry. Number one, he has the ministry of conviction. Number two, the Holy Spirit goes, This is the scope of his assignment. Conviction. What does it mean to convict? To bring to your awareness to compel you to pay attention to an object or a truth the Holy Spirit he's the one behind every kind of godly conviction number two the ministry of transformation what is transformation the name given to the process that makes you like Christ in experience is called transformation my little children, he says, on whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Then the ministry of empowerment. What does it mean to empower? To empower means to engrace you. To engrace you so that you are able to produce results that ordinarily you would not be able to produce. Are we together? All of the long stories that I started with giving the theological background is to this intent. Listen carefully. This is the core of my teaching now anywhere you find the holy spirit on earth it is one of these three things he's doing conviction transformation empowerment look at me uh, we're going to discuss his ministry 
uh, and the objects the recipients who are the candidates that qualify for his ministry but until then i want you to understand something every time you see an unbeliever the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation never forget this the greatest need of an unbeliever is not house rent the greatest need of an unbeliever is not the hospital the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of a believer is transformation when a believer is saved the next assignment of the holy spirit is to sponsor transformation an heir for as long as he's a child the bible says he differeth not from a slave though he be lord of all are we together transformation then the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment this is the sequence every time look just learning this alone will make you a mature christian so you you know how to bless people according to the categories when you see an unbeliever your principal assignment is to stand in partnership with the holy spirit to the end that he becomes a recipient of the life of god no matter what you do to an unbeliever if he has not received salvation you have not given him the greatest gift for a believer the greatest gift you can give a believer is an atmosphere and an information that can lead to transformation you can give miracles you can build a house you can bring breakthrough you can bring healing none of those things are superior in themselves the most superior blessing that you can give a believer is access to light illumination bringing him to a place of transformation then for a believer that is transformed the greatest need for a transformed believer is now to be able to prove and defend his proposition and for that he will need empowerment are you seeing that now just having this knowledge alone will make you such a matured christian and you will know how to help people you don't start talking about salvation to one who is already saved except you're just teaching him and mentoring him to also be an effective evangelist a non-believer salvation a believer transformation a transformed believer empowerment are we together and may i add that the greatest need of an empowered believer is character and humility when a believer is empowered he now needs character and humility because knowledge can puff up remember our teaching we just finished a series on witnesses so the holy spirit has a threefold ministry conviction transformation empowerment conviction transformation empowerment now write this down please who are the three principal recipients of the ministry of the holy spirit according to scripture there are three principal recipients of the ministry of the holy spirit number one creation you will be surprised to know that creation depends on the holy spirit to survive the holy spirit is not just a reality for christians or non-christians without the holy spirit creation cannot survive it was the light that came from him that sponsored creation coming back again withdraw the holy spirit is not only men that would die creation will also die are we together job 34 from verse 14 and 15 the first recipient the first recipient of the ministry of the holy spirit is the entire creation from verse 14 and 15 if he set his heart upon man if he gather on to himself his spirit and his breath what happens to creation all flesh shall perish together and all man shall turn again to dust that means if god withdraws the holy spirit literally out of earth right now men will wither creation will wither science will come to naught the holy spirit is the life-giving factor of creation this is true the first recipient of his ministry is the entire creation plants animals nature etc everything that was made because without him 
was not anything made that was made in him was life and so everything that came from him has that life and that life is the holy spirit i have profound respect for science we have been able to advance so well in science especially in recent times people are still trying to disintegrate atoms to see if they can find a lot of other things you know and so on and so forth let me tell you behind if we keep breaking down breaking down breaking down breaking down we will arrive at one conclusion the unit of life is the word of god but in that word of god is the spirit of god ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 the spirit entered me when he spake unto me verse 2 the spirit entered me so the word of god contains the spirit of god the word of god contains the power of god habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified it says and his brightness was like the sunlight and the rays streamed from his hand and there in the sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power when you break life into its finest what you will meet is the word of god we call it energy we call it matter i don't mean to abuse and insult science but i can tell you from the authority of scripture the spirit of god is the life factor of the entire creation are we together the second recipient of the ministry of the holy spirit according to scripture is the unbeliever the unbeliever is not supposed to be an insultive word it's a description it's a state who is an unbeliever one who has not had the opportunity to hear and to believe the gospel what is the gospel a revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus man and creation being the object of that love and that sacrifice that is the gospel for god so loved the world john 3 and verse 16 that he gave his one and only begotten now the firstborn among we the begotten that whosoever believes in him should not perish the bible says but have life eternal unbelievers he has a ministry to unbelievers what is his ministry to unbelievers conviction the holy spirit has a ministry of conviction to unbelievers john chapter 16 please john chapter 16 let's look at verse let's start from verse 13 john chapter 16 it says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you please back down a little i'm looking for the scripture where find it for me if you can okay i think that should be john 16 from verse 7 go down to verse 7 same scripture verse 7 please john 16 and verse 7 now listen it says nevertheless jesus is speaking now i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter the comforter will not come to you is the greek word alos parakletos the word alos means of the same material and the same mission the opposite is heteros alos parakletos the paraclet it says the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you verse 8 when he is come what will be his mission his first assignment is he will reprove the world of three things number one of sin number two of righteousness number three of judgment he buttresses on that point verse nine of sin because they believe not on me so what is the sin there unbelief of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more verse 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged listen to me the primary assignment of the holy spirit to unbelievers is conviction this is powerful so whilst you are listening to me now and the world is listening to me assuming i'm on a crusade ground while i am teaching sharing like reinhard bonke of blessed memory sharing like billy graham of blessed memory whilst you are talking it doesn't matter what expression it comes with in that crusade ground 
the Holy Ghost is hovering around the people bringing conviction what does it mean to convict to bring an awareness to plant in you seriousness over something conviction and awareness nobody sustains the power to save any sinner just with intelligence and oratory it takes the power of the holy spirit because there is a law that works in every sinner romans chapter 8 and verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation it says to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit here it is verse 2 for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus had made me free not just from sin but a law of sin that leads to death every time you are sharing the gospel please listen to me believers every time you are talking to an unbeliever you are telling him about jesus the love of jesus i want you to expect at the back of your mind that the paraclete is there with you creating conviction this is what happened in the book of acts chapter 3 when they came and met the people they said who are these guys who are drunk with new wine and peter said no we are not drunk with new wine this is only nine o'clock in the morning but this is that this is that which prophet joel spoke about and now he began he went to david he went to joel and when he spoke to them the bible says they were caught to the heart that's the holy spirit and they said men and brethren what do we do he says repent for the remission of your sin and then you will be baptized and you will receive this promise for this promise is unto you and unto your children your children's children as many as are far off and in one day three thousand people came to jesus the convicting power of the holy spirit he does not only convict he compels is the greek word anakazo the compelling power of the spirit so that he will have men he can convict he also sustains the power to draw them from wherever they are and bring them to the atmosphere where they can hear the gospel this is powerful this is why we pray for people listen to me this is the entire idea about wanting more and more people to hear the gospel it's not just a celebration of crowd to show that a man of god has such influence over a city no jesus died for men largely and then creation so if he wants you to truly be an advocate of this gospel there must be a way of bringing men to you for god so loved the world why do we pray every time that god brings people to this place we don't just pray because we're ambitious people trying to look for a way of building an excelling career not at all we realize that until men come they will not have an opportunity to hear the gospel thank god for internet right now there are tens of thousands of people following online from different nations and they now have the opportunity to hear to be mentored to be built everybody say conviction so whilst you prepare to do the work of an evangelist which is a mandate for all believers you must know at the back of your mind that while I'm teaching, because some of you are not able to win souls because you think, I don't speak very well, I don't know all of the scriptures. If the Holy Ghost is not with you, if you are not conscious of his ministry to convict, you will only waste your time trying to talk to a sinner. He will listen to you talk for over 30 minutes and you say, in this book, what happened? And you begin a debate there that ends you in anger. Many people have tried to go and preach the gospel without the consciousness of his convicting power. Let me tell you this. When the power of the Holy Spirit to convict is in a place, you can sing a song about redemption and say, come to Jesus. And people will run and come out because in that song, once the message of salvation is captured in it, I am not ashamed of the gospel, he says, for it is the power, not just the suggestion, the power of God unto salvation. Say amen. So that you leave this place this night conscious of the fact that the Holy Spirit has a ministry to unbelievers. Now you are not afraid of their faces. Because sometimes you'll be talking to people that when you look at their faces as if their face is so discouraging. Will this guy ever give his life to Christ? Whilst you are talking, they are not even giving you the attention. Don't mind them. The Holy Ghost is walking. At the end of that you will see let's listen go back to your family members some of you have family members that are not saved you've been advising them that's why they are not saved they need more than an advice they need the gospel 
The only vaccination for sin is the gospel. The way your life is going, why don't you become a better person? That's counseling. That's not the gospel. The gospel is a revelation of the love of the Father. Jesus must be mentioned for it to be the gospel. The love of the Father must be mentioned for it to be the gospel. The sacrifice of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.